welcome to my channel IT Smart Training today I am going to start uh, with the video session with the IAM identity and access management if my video is informative please like and share definitely subscribe my channel to get more technological video update which makes you IT Smart so let's start today's session IAM Identity and Access Management So at first we have to know that what is IAM AWS Identity and Access Management IAM is a web service that helps you securely control access to AWS resources. You use IAM to control who is authenticated or sign in and authorized means who have permissions to use resources. Resources means services, AWS services. When you first create an AWS account, you begin with a single sign-in identity that has complete access to all AWS services and resources in the account means that is the administrative or root account this identity is called the AWS account root user and you see it is accessed by sign-in with the email address and the password that you use to create the account. We strongly recommended that you do not use the root user for your everyday task, even the administrative ones also. Instead, adhere to the best practice of using the root user only to create your first IAM user. Use this root account to create first IAM user. So this is the AWS IAM. First I will start IAM introduction. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. your whole security AWS security is there in IAM there are users groups and roles are there in IAM you can create user you can add users into the group you can manage the roles which user can access which kind of roles you can assign with the IAM keep in mind root account never be used and share to anyone user must be create with proper permission okay IAM is the center of AWS IAM is the center of AWM in the IAM there we have to written some policies and the policies are written in JSON. JSON means JavaScript object notation. So you have these points keep into your mind. Here you can see users usually a physical person. Users I have created a user one. So user is a physical person who can use the AWS service with that login and that user must be under a groups there are so many groups you can create like admins DevOps uh, and etc you can create 
so many groups you can create and the user must add inside the group so users it is a it, it is usually a physical person groups its content users suppose you have uh, an admin group who, who where we, you, you just uh, uh, do some administrative tasks so there in administrative group there you have four users so create user 1 user 2 user 3 user 4 and you just add that four user into the admin group accordingly you set a permission or a role into the admin group if you set a permission to admin group that four user which is inside the admin group can assign that role or the roles are inherited into the admin groups users so roles basically are uh, internal uses within the AWS resources suppose I just give a permissions admin can only operate the EC2 service okay so when user 1 which is the member of admin when user 1 logged in he just only access the EC2 service so in this way you can manipulate users groups and roles so first I am introduction so first IAM has a global view I will show you in uh, next uh, video so there you can see that uh, IAM is a global view in my previous video I also described these things uh, IAM is a global view it is change if I change a permission it is uh, applicable into the global permissions are governed by policies if I have to set the permissions are governed by policies and the policies should be written with JSON MFA multi-factor authentication you can set up a multi-factor authentication inside the IAM user IAM has predefined managed policies there are some predefined managed policies you can set that predefined managed policies it is a best to give users the minimal amount of permissions they need to perform their job list privilege list principles okay next next we have to know that how IAM works okay so before you can create users you should understand how IAM works IAM provides the infrastructure necessary to control authentication and authorizations for your account the IAM infrastructure includes the following elements like terms principle request authentication authorizations actions or, op or operations and resources so here is a, um, a diagram which is a, a reference from the AWS uh, white paper so this is your AWS cloud and here is AWS account ID inside the AWS here the steps which we will uh, describe you shortly in these steps uh, the authentication authorizations are worked and the, all the users and service are assigned inside the uh, IAM user so here you can see the big thing this one one AWS account this one is the another AWS account this one is another AWS account so I just go next first point terms inside the term there are some sub points first is resources the user group role policy and the identity provider objects these all are called identity provider objects 
okay so user group role policy and identity these are provider objects that are stored in IAM these all are stored in IAM as with other AWS service you can add edit or remove resources from IAM next identities if you want to say resources these are the resources users groups role policy and identity these are the resources and what is identities the IAM resources objects that are used to identify and group the IAM resources object that are used to identify and group you can attach a policy to an IAM identity if we uh, want to attach a policy so we have to create a identity then we have to assign policy into it these include users groups and roles okay next entities the IAM resources objects that AWS users for authentication this includes IAM user federated users and assume IAM roles next principle a person or a applications that users the AWS account root user and IAM user so a person or an application that uses the AWS account root user and IAM user or an IAM role to sign in and make request to AWS okay got it next next principle a principal is a person or application that can make a request for an action or operations on an AWS resources the principal is authenticated as the AWS account root user or an IAM entity to make request to AWS as a best practice do not use your root user credential for our daily work I already told that instead create IAM entities like users roles you can also support federated users or programmatic access to allow an applications to access your AWS account request when a principal tries to use AWS management console the AWS API or the AWS CLI that principal sends a request to AWS the request includes the following information first information is included that is action operations what is action operations the actions or operations that the principal wants to perform this can be action in the AWS management console or an operation in the AWS CLI or AWS API next resources the AWS resources object upon which the actions are operations are performed next principle the person or an application that use an entity user or a role to send the request information about the principle includes the policies that are associated with the entity that the principle used to sign in environment data information about the IP address users agent is a selenable status or the time of the day etc resource data data related to the resources that is being requested this can include information such as a DynamoDB table name or the tag on an Amazon EC2 instance these are the request information next authentication a principal must be authenticated 
are signed in AWS. Using their credential to send the request to AWS, some services such as Amazon S3 and AWS STS allow a few requests from anonymous user. However, they are the exception to the rule. Except this, all the all other services are must be signed in. That doesn't allow the anonymous user. Next, to authenticate from the console as a root user, you must sign in with your email address and a password. And an IAM user provide your account ID or alias. And then user name and password the authenticate from the API or a AWS CLI you must provide your access key and secret key you might also be required to provide additional security information for example AWS recommends that you use multi-factor authentication MFA to increase the security of your account to learn more about the IAM entities that AWS can authenticate next authorization in authorization you must also be authorized or allowed to complete your request during the authorization when a, uh, during the authorizations AWS users values from the request context to check for policies that can apply to the request it then uses the policies to determine whether the allow or deny request most policies are stored in AWS as a JSON documents and specify the permissions or principal entry entities there are several types of policies that can effect whether a request authorized to provide your users with the permissions to access the AWS resources in their own account you need only identity based policies resource based policies are popular for gathering cross account access between two AWS account there uh, actually apply the resource based policies otherwise we can use identity based policies the other policies types are advanced features and should be uh, used carefully so here we just uh, provide I just say you the basic thing there is a two part we have seen one is the authentication another is a authorization so authentication means we have a ticket which I show you suppose uh, we want to see a movie so we buy we bought a ticket to see the movie so ticket is the authentication key I have to show the cinema hall for to security for my authentication that I have purchased a ticket inside the ticket there is written some information like my seat number my row number everything my timings after inside the hall there is a guy who is manage this authentication task that means that guy can guide me which seat which row I can sit which is written over the ticket so this is basically the authorizations so in the same case authentication means I have the authentication I have just provide my credential to authenticate if my credential is correct then the AWS account provide me the authorization means which service I have to access so this is the basically the authentication and authorization phase next AWS checks each policies that applies to context of your request if a single permission policy includes a denied action AWS denies the entry uh, entire request and stops the evaluating here I just want to tell you one thing if authentication is failed <coughs> me. 
if authentication is failed then authorization phase will not start you have to pass the authentication then you have to promote your authorization task otherwise if authentication and failed then authorization uh, in authorization phase your uh, total uh, process will denied that's why here is written AWS denies the entire request and stops the evaluating this is called explicit deny because requests are denied by default AWS authorize your request only if every part of your request is allowed by the applicable permission policies the evaluation logic for an request within a single account follows these general rules what are their rules first by default all requests are denied okay in general request made using the AWS account root user credentials for resources in the account are always allowed an explicit allow in an permission policy identity based or resource based policy whatever override this default the existence of an organization's SCP IAM permissions boundary or a session policy override the allow if one or more of these policies types exist they must all allow the request otherwise it is explicit deny an explicit deny in an on in any policy overrides any allow okay an explicit deny in any policy overrides any allows if you need to make request in a different account a policy in the other account must allow you to access the resource and the IAM identity that you use to make the request must have an identity based policy that allows the request next actions or operations after the request had been authenticated and authorized AWS approves the actions or operations in the in your request operations are defined by services and include things that you can do to a resources such as viewing creating editing and deleting that resources for example I am support approximately 40 actions for a user resources include the following actions like create user delete user get user update user to allow a principal to perform an operations you must include the necessary actions in an policy that applies to the principal or the affected resources next resources after AWS provide uh, approves the operations in your request they can be performed on the related resources within your account a resource is an object that exists within a service for examples uh, include an Amazon EC2 instance and IAM user and an Amazon S3 bucket the service defines a set of actions that can be performed on each resources if you create a request to perform an unrelated actions on a resources that request is denied for example if you request to delete an IAM role but provide an IAM group resources the request fail so here is the that scenario we already described the scenario so these are the identity based policies here is written inside the uh, policies so this is actually the uh, scenario uh, which uh, I we uh, described uh, previously so thank you uh, if my video is informative please like the video and uh, subscribe my channel
in a lab session we will uh, coming very soon in next video thank you thank you for watching